Good morning and happy Sunday. It's so good to see you. We're going to get to our music in just a few moments, but I want to talk to you about our story this morning. Did you know that a long time ago, God told a few people that Jesus would be coming? It's all in the Bible. I promise you're going to find out in just a few moments. People predicted that Jesus was going to come to save us from our sins. I can't wait for you to be able to learn more about this today, but go on ahead, get up. We're going to worship God through music now. Have fun. We speak your name, we lift our eyes, tune our hearts into your beat. Where we walk, there you'll be, with fire in our eyes, a life's a light, your love untamed, it's blazing out, the streets will glow, forever bright, your glory's breaking through the night.
you ever feel like you as kids are too small to do something great? I hate to throw a wrench in what you're thinking about, but I'll tell you what, I need to level with you, right? Okay, you're gonna new, learn about this cool kid named Josiah, who God used to build, well, something a little bit special. But I'll tell you what, now we need to hammer God's word into your heart. So you know what? That way your parents can <laughs> drill you on it and make sure you understand it. Okay, you ready? Here, let's go. 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord does not delay his promises, as some understand delay, but he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but for all to come to repentance. Now let's try to say this again since I kind of messed it up. Okay, you ready? The Lord does not delay his promises, as some understand delay, but is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but for all to come to repentance. All right, 2 Peter 3, 9. You've had five weeks to remember that verse. So make sure it's hammered into your brain and that your parents can help you drill it into your heart. Have a great day. See you next month. Good morning, Church at Nolensville Kids. It's me, Miss Kara, and I'm here to you, with you today to tell you a happy, fun story about two kings. We've been learning about lots of kings, lots of prophets lately, uh, and our two kings today are Hezekiah, Hezekiah, and Josiah. And Hezekiah is the grandfather of Josiah. And so we're going to hear about those, those kings in a minute. So our story today, we are in a new book of the Bible. We've been in, in First and Second Kings. We've learned about all these kings, all these prophets. Now we are in the book of Chronicles. Now, Sometimes when we tell these Bible stories, we come across these big, odd sounding words. And Chronicles might be one of those words for you. So I, Chronicles rings a bell with me when I hear it, like the Chronicles of Narnia. Who's, who's heard of those books by C.S. Lewis? They're wonderful books. Check them out if you, if, you, if you don't know about those yet. But Chronicles means a factual written account of importance of historical events in the order of occurrence. That's all, her, that's all a chronicle is. It's just the telling of the story. And so these are the chronicles of these kings in, in the time of Israel. So last week we heard about the prophet Isaiah, who God used to warn the people of Judah that the kingdom of Israel was going to fall. And later on, the kingdom of Judah was going to fall too. And the kingdom of Judah did fall. The Assyrians had destroyed the kingdom and scattered the people. And this happened while King Ahaz, the king of Judah. And that's today where our story picks up. It's about two kings who reign after King Ahaz. And their names were Hezekiah and Josiah. Now, let's go back over our big picture question. It was new a couple of weeks ago, and it is this. It's a really good one. I want you to memorize it. So take the time, maybe write it out on a sheet of paper. I've showed you before, but I, I write it out just on a, just a normal sheet of white paper. And sometimes I make up hand motions to help us remember, because when we, we, when we involve our body, when we put hand motions, it kind of helps our brains to make different kinds of connections. That's why I do all those little silly hearts and making and all that. It's because it helps your brain to make connections. Our big picture question is this, how did God plan to fix, how did God plan to fix what sin broke? Before he created the world, God planned to send the Messiah. How did God plan to fix what sin broke? Before he created the world, he planned to send the Messiah. So in our story today, the southern kingdom of Judah had many kingdoms. Remember, we had the northern kingdom who got destroyed. The Assyrians took it away. And we had the southern kingdom, which was from the line of David. And most of the kings were evil. Get out your evil eyebrows. And they did not follow God. And kings like Ahaz set up places to worship idols. Idols were pretend, not real gods. And the people forgot about God. And when King Ahaz died, his son Hezekiah became king. But good news, Hezekiah was not like his dad. He did what was right. He trusted God. 
and he obeyed God and his commands. And Hezekiah made some changes in the kingdom. He, he led the people to worship God again. And guess what? Things went well with him. God blessed him. And after Hezekiah died, King Manasseh, which was the most evil king probably ever, <laughs> the most evil king, Manasseh, he became a king. And guess what? All those idols and awful things that the Israelites had worshipped with King Ahaz and Hezekiah had taken down, guess what King Manasseh did? He put them back up. And so he, he was the ruler for 55 years. Then his son, King Ammon, became king. And he was evil too. Get your evil eyebrows. But thankfully, whew, he only ruled for two years. So we only had to put up with King Ammon for two years. Then, after King Ammon, came Josiah. And Josiah, this is really cool. Josiah was eight years old when he became king. I'm going to repeat that. Josiah was eight years old when he became king. And he was a good king, like his ancestor David. And Josiah lived in a way that pleased God. And when Josiah was a teenager, because remember he came to power at, at age eight, he started to follow God. And he started to make some changes around the kingdom too. And he got rid of all the things that were not pleasing to God. He got rid of all the idols and the places where people worship false gods. And when Josiah was a young man, as he'd kind of grown up, and now he was no longer a boy, he's a young man, and he wanted to repair the Lord's temple. Remember the beautiful temple that, that King Solomon had made? And as the temple was being repaired, so they were painting and maybe nailing boards that were, that were kind of warped, and maybe they were replacing wood, and maybe they were maybe making some new carvings that had kind of gotten yucky, and they were cleaning. As they were doing these things, as they were restoring the temple, a high priest found a very important document. And he said, I have the book of the law. The people didn't even know where the book of the law, where their, their scriptures were. That is how much they were not obeying God. They didn't even know where their scriptures were. They didn't even know how to obey God. And when Josiah, King Josiah, heard this, he tore his clothes and he said, Oh no, God is very angry with us. Our ancestors, he's realizing, oh my goodness, if we didn't even have the scriptures, God must be so angry with us. And so he is like, he's flipping out because he's thinking, oh my goodness, this is awful. We did not obey. And he's realizing how much they didn't obey. But a prophetess is a girl prophet, she brings a message from God and she says, I'm going to punish the people of Judah because they turned away from me and worshiped other gods. But God had a special message for Josiah. And he says, here's the special message that God gave Josiah. Because you were humble and were sorry for your sin, when you heard the law, you will die in peace. So he's saying, don't fear, Josiah. I'm going to take care of you. And he says, you will not see the punishment that I'm going to bring to the people. And so Josiah whew, gives a big sigh of relief. And he goes to the temple and he reads all the words of the law to the people. The people had probably not heard these words for a very long time. And he tells the people, I'm going to follow and obey God. And the people at the temple agreed to do the same thing, and they agreed to obey God. And as long as Josiah was king, the people followed and obeyed him. So Josiah and Hezekiah, they're two little bright spots in, in all these terrible, awful kings. And the good news is this. God loves it when his people turn back to him. And Jesus came to earth, and he fulfilled the law by doing it perfectly. Jesus was absolutely perfect. He never disobeyed. And so like Hezekiah, like Hezekiah and Josiah were good kings, they are pointing to the perfect king, King Jesus, who was coming and would make all things new. So when Jesus came to earth, he fulfilled the law perfectly. 
That is our story for today. Two good kings, Hezekiah and Josiah. Go read this story in 2 Chronicles 29 and, and find out more about King Josiah and Hezekiah. And, and I pray that we will not, I've been praying all week, God, please don't let us be like the people that were in Josiah's day. Please let us honor your word and love your word and follow your word. And, and I pray that you children will read this, read this good book this week. Miss Kara loves you, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.